the last of the four in the reading section you're looking at question four which you should know now to be the language question and this is where you're going to compare two uh, texts and look at the way that the language is used and the effect that comes about because of its use so we start then looking at the right band area that we're looking in to make sure that we're clear and relevant so we want to show clear evidence that the texts are understood in relation to language so I need to actually show how language has been used offer clear explanation of the effect of the words and phrases in the different contexts so if one excuse me if one uh, text is using a word or a phrase and the effect leads us one it in one direction and the other one uses it in another direction we have to be able to pick that out um, and obviously if it's not the same we have to be able to, to do the same thing it's really thinking about the effect what it makes us feel what it makes us think of what it encourages us to do whatever it might be offers relevant quotations or references to support ideas so you have to pick out and support everything and offers clear comparisons and cross references between the two texts so you have to be able to show what's similar and different different and cross-reference basically means picking out different parts and referring to them uh, as you know as as needs be there's not an actual amount of times that you need to do it but it's as needs be and you will have to do it to to get a half decent essay across now this is the one that I recommend you write as an essay so the rest of them are free flowing paragraphs you know you just have to answer the question but this is a, I would write this as an essay complete in itself because it is worth 16 marks so you are looking for probably a page and a half two sides for this um, depending so let's look at how many words this one is just to give us an idea so here we have the word count is take your time 371 which is about a page and a half which is yeah I think for yeah about a page and a half so that's that's very very doable um, so right, let's go through it so the question is compare the different ways in which language is used for effect in the two texts and give some examples and analyze the effect so I'm picking source two and three to actually analyze and if you have a copy of this exam remember it's the June uh, 2011 one and uh, you might be able to get one of your English department uh, at school uh, if, if obviously you're doing AQA or they can at least photocopy one for you or you can take your photocopy and give it back it's always good to have the real exam in front of you because that's you know what you're working towards so remember first and foremost that the language is pretty much always going to be the same so you're always going to be comparing something looking at language and the effect and you need to give examples and analyze analyze the effect okay so in passage three the writer uses very descriptive language to help build a picture for what is going on she tells us that she was full of anticipation the use of the word full shows how much she was hoping and looking forward which has an effect on the reader we can relate and also because it allows us to understand how much she was looking forward to finding the clothes so that's clear um, it's relevant it does make sense it's better than some attempt but it's not perceptive there's nothing really detailed about that it just makes clear clear sense she also tells us that her boat would rush at a wave the language device used here is onomatopoeia which has the effect of a sound of a wave in the word rush which helps put us in the scene as she's that uh, she is describing as well as describing the speed with which the boat is traveling the use of this language has a very dramatic effect so that's again in the same region it's better than having some um, some appreciation it's you know they picked out that the word rush gives us the idea of speed and obviously the onomatopoeia in there so it's slightly more detailed answer than the first one but again it's not it's not really perceptive it's quite an obvious and a simple thing to, to pick, out, pick out but they have picked out um, a phrase here rush at the wave and so both times they picked out a phrase to analyze and then a excuse me one a singular a single word which you know just again that's that's showing a little more analysis and a little more thought than just stopping at full uh, sorry full of anticipation or rush at the wave so so far so good the writer also uses a simile to help make a strong image in our ah sorry the one thing that's missing so far you'll see is that I've gone into two excuse me two paragraphs and I have not mentioned the other text at all um, actually this should be passage yeah, here's passage three. Sorry. So well, here we have actually we've got the the description as we've got gone across. We haven't cross referenced at all yet. So while we're hitting some points for here, I'm not offering. Uh, sorry, I'm not offering clear comparisons or cross references at all. And uh, a lot of marks in this go towards that. Although we show the understanding, uh, it's the cross referencing really kind of moves it up into the higher grade. So until I've done some of that, then I'm, I'm going to have a very awkward. Um, an awkward essay um, and obviously because it's missing it's just inviting the examiner to to bring me down if there's um, limited ability to compare across reference then I'm taking you know skills from band one down here and mixing it with that so I'm probably gonna end up somewhere there let's see what happens the writer also uses simile to help make a strong image in our heads when she tells us like a dirty washcloth I was spun rinse this description also gives us an idea of how much movement there was in the sea and that she was being moved about in all directions so again the language analysis has been used the descriptions and the um, 
lead your techniques, etc. So that's that's all fine. It's um, you, that that one's actually probably a bit superfluous because we already had two there. It hasn't really done anything different with this paragraph, but um, it, it's good for us to reference and see. The language in source two is also very dramatic. Good. Now finally, we're getting into the cross referencing. We are told that Mr. Trap strapped himself. That rhymes. Mr. Trap strapped himself into a chair, which shows he had to do it very tightly, as what he was about to do was very dangerous. Mm, okay, that's, I mean, it's justifiable, but it's not very strong. So that's one thing. I think if, if you looked at the video before, the, or a couple of videos uh, before this, where you looked at the chief examiner's comments, where he actually something, some points were weak and some points were forced, this is getting on to a little point of felt forced. You're taking a very small idea and really elaborating it. And um, yeah, it's, it's not the best, but it is, it is relevant, but it's not, um, it's not, and it's an attempt, but it's not, it's nowhere near, you know, very, very a strong point. There is also similarity in why they were strapping themselves in rather um, neither of them wanted to fall out but the reason they are strapping themselves in is very different um, so yeah you, you can see here that the student or in this response sorry the students uh, the, the theoretical student is trying to respond and cross-reference this but they don't really know how to go about it so they're kind of pushing towards an understanding uh, but they're not getting very very far with it so this is at least it's some attempt so it's better than better than being a poor attempt let's see if it gets any better the language used in source 2 is more calm and relaxing as the Sun rose this is still very descriptive but more gentle than what is happening in source 3 Okay, now that is a, a good bolt-on, okay? So obviously here I'm actually getting the idea they're still trying, and although it's not brilliant, they're, they're actually still going with it. So the language using source 2 is more common. So the idea that I've got this uh, being more than something, so I'm still offering a comparison. So this is still very descriptive, and obviously that's what I've referenced earlier when I've actually said that the, the other... Um, a piece has more descriptive writing, but it's more gentle than what is happening in the third source. So it's just a real bolt on. You can see it doesn't show a lot of confidence, but uh, or, or kind of skill. Even look at the actual paragraph itself. It's very short compared to all the others. Here the students had a little bit more confidence. They knew what they were doing and here they just put the bare bolts down, you know, still trying to hit the descriptor. And to be fair now, with all of those three things, uh, I'm starting to get the feeling that they're, you know, they're offering more, you know, it, it's a very strong sum and uh, a slightly weaker, a slightly weaker, but I don't think it's perfectly clear yet. So we're never going to get towards a 12 with this writing, but we might be hitting the nine soon. Also, the language in Source 2 gives us a peaceful image that we would want to be at. Quiet, peaceful, and beautiful, but the language in Source 3 is exactly the opposite, as there she hears a banging and crashing. Now that's good, okay, that's direct analysis. The language that's used to convey the um, aural uh, emphasis of the sound, uh, we're picking up in both. Both sources use a sense of sound to build an image for the reader, but one does it to show us how relaxed the journey is, and Source 3 shows us how terrifying the journey is. So that's a very clear comparison, that's well done. So, in fact, if you just had this one, one and maybe this one that would probably be better so when you're looking at this I mean you, we probably would have got the marks without two of these paragraphs we would have got exactly the same mark um, yeah so that's that's the end of um, answering the question as a C grade candidate so let me just kind of put it together to see where I would get to with that so I'm presuming um, that one I might get a nine uh, with the uh, question I did for question um, excuse me question three uh, that one was a little better so I might have a five so it's nine and five and then with the other one that was a five and then a six for the first one so what I'm looking at there is 25 so 25 if I double 25 I've actually, I'd actually be in a middle B so you see how um, important it is to always just get into the bottom of the band three because none of my stuff there overall would have come uh, even though some of it was like really low level band 3 none of it would uh, sorry I have all the answers if you've been watching all the videos nothing would have actually come all the way down to um, excuse me nothing would have come all the way down into band 2 so this is, should be the base where you're, where you're aiming for to have a confidency you can kind of like I said have some of the areas uh, as a band 2 and still get a C but don't aim for it uh, or, obviously sorry that's a bit patronizing um, make sure that everything you're going for is the top of the band three and then if you miss some of that then at least you'll be at the bottom of band three rather than just trying to scrape into the bottom I hope that was useful so now we'll round off the um, we'll round off the A and uh, please make sure you check back for the examiners uh, the head of English and examiners assessment of it as well so he'll give you a very detailed a probably more formal version than I've gone through so I've been explaining what I've done here and why it's right or wrong and they'll be actually going through the similar thing but it could be going uh, through the descriptors a lot more and it'll be a lot more formal and uh, probably a lot more serious which is which is probably a very good change from my wittering